Hi, everybody. Welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Today, I'm talking to Courtney. She just started a channel. It's called Expounding Scripture. Uh, let me show you guys. I will put a link for her channel in the description box below. You can also just search for her on Facebook, or you can go to my homepage and go to my featured channels. I have her in the number one spot right here, Expounding Scripture. All right. And uh, she is from Arbuckle, California. Let me know in the comments if you've heard of that before. It's in Northern California. Um, yeah. And uh, Courtney, what made you decide to start this channel? What's it about? Well, okay. So let me let me kind of go to the beginning of my journey, if you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a long time ago, a few years ago, um, I read in the scriptures that every blessing in Doctrine and Covenants, it talks about how every blessing is predicated upon law. Yeah, And I was like, oh, yeah, I love that scripture so much. And I was like, please teach me. So the Lord started teaching me all these things. And then I was like, I want to start a coaching business. And so I started um, a coaching business. And as I was doing that, it wasn't feeling right. Like I really enjoyed talking with people, really enjoyed teaching them things. Um, but then I would watch your channel and you kept inviting like the women to start a YouTube channel. And so I was like, oh, I wonder. So then I prayed about it and that's what felt right. So then I started doing it. Right. So it's been a lot of fun. And it's needed because <clears throat> there's a lot of uh, channels out there that are more aligned with the adversary. that are hostile toward the church. And uh, the whole reason why I put the offer out there was to uh, further you know, President Spencer W. Kimball's vision, uh, his prophecy about the women of right now, how they're going to bring in large numbers of people into the church because they're going to be uh, happy and good and distinct from the world. And uh, that's going to attract the the good women of the world into the church. So, yeah, I'm all about that. So I'm really glad that you started the channel. So, yeah, thank you for the invitation. Yeah. All right. So you had some stuff that you wanted to share, kind of show everyone like <clears throat> what your channel is going to be all about. Yes. So, um, because I have, um, uh, like the knowledge of the laws and stuff, um, I plan to share the laws. I love the laws so much, but I'll get to that in a minute. Mm -hmm. So what I first invite people to do on my channel and every video is to learn to liken the scriptures to themselves. It's so, I mean, I've been in the position where like, I'm listening to a talk and I'm like, Ch Kelly Joe can really use this talk right now. I hope that she is listening, you know? And so it's like learning to liken the scriptures to ourselves instead of liking it to someone else. So I invite that every single, every single video. And, um, I had some like examples of, um, of liking the scriptures to ourselves. So like in the scriptures, it talks about being past feeling and it's really easy to be like, to like kind of skip over that. But like, I tell people like, okay, so you are, you know, your past feeling of when you say I'm grateful and you don't feel grateful. It's just a habit. And so it's like learning to feel when you speak. And if you cannot feel love, when you say, I love you and you don't feel it in your heart, then you're past feeling. Yeah. You, you have a hard heart in that area. Or if I say, thank you so much, but I don't feel it, then I am past feeling. And so um, I love that one. That is a good example that I love to share with people. I and feel like then, that's, that's pretty related to the concept of like caring, you know, because like you can either care about people or not care about people. Because if you don't care about people, if you kind of like dehumanize them in your mind, not that you're treating them like really bad, but you don't really see them as equal to you. You don't care about their happiness, their their welfare, then you're like past feeling. I think a lot, a lot of it has to do with what you care about and it, and it can take some work for you to actually care for others. It may take some time, but I think that's something you got to practice. Yeah. And here's another one. Like when you go and repent, do you just go and say, I'm really sorry because it's like a checklist or do you take the time to be like, heavenly father, I know you freely forgive. Can you help me feel the forgiveness in my heart? So like, you know, deep in your heart that you're forgiven. Or is it like just something you check off the list and you feel good about yourself because I'm, I'm, I'm repenting. I'm doing what the Lord wants me to do. You mm -hmm. know, there's a difference between um, thinking forgiving, but like feeling forgiven. Cause yeah. how many of us like struggle with, I don't believe the Lord really forgives me. 
well, maybe you're not feel like maybe you're not taking the time to feel forgiven, like to really feel his love. Yeah. I feel like I mean, um, okay. I'm not casting judgment, but I feel like I've seen a lot of people in my life that just seem to be going through the motions, both spiritually and maybe even temporally too, where they're just like existing and they're, they're maybe working toward certain goals, worldly goals. But it's just like, you sometimes wonder, is there anybody home? Like we have, we have to be alive and we have to become these things. Uh, I've talked about this on the channel before. It's not a just, it's not enough just to, you know, check off the boxes. Like you were saying, we have to like become those boxes. We have to become love and charity and humble. We have to like make that a part of ourselves rather than just performing them. We have to, like, yeah. It's them. kind of, it kind of reminds me of perfectionism. Like a lot of perfect you, when you struggle with perfectionism, you go into those check marks. Do I look good? Do I look good? You care more about the outer than the inner. Yeah. Like the outer vessel looks good, but the inner, the inner vessel sure is a hot mess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So my next one, um, is to learn to trust and believe the words, um, of Christ. So like, for example, he freely forgives, but are you hard on yourself? Do you beat yourself up because you make a mistake that then you don't trust Christ when he says you're forgiven? And so that's learning for us to learn to let go and um, stop condemning ourselves. Like, I think Satan likes to whisper in our ear, you know, like you're bad because you made a mistake. And so then we get in the habit of condemning ourselves, of beating ourselves up instead of being like, oh, you know, I don't like that I did that. Let me try that again. Like showing myself compassion, like, oh, why do I do that? Oh, I used to see my mom do that. Okay, so that's something I don't want to do anymore. And then you take it to the Lord, right? Like he makes every weakness become a strength, but there are conditions in that scripture. If you humble yourself and you sh show faith in Christ. So if I truly humble myself, like Heavenly Father, I know this weakness I have, can you please help me turn it into a strength? But do I believe he'll help me turn it into a strength? There's, there's a difference there. It's learning to believe that he can do what he says he's going to do. Yeah. And I, I feel like you develop that as you like, as you test it, as you test it for yourself, you, and you pay attention, you start to, you start to feel the relief uh, from whatever you're, you've repented of, or, or when you pray, you start to see those answers to prayers. As long as you're doing that and you have faith and you pay attention, um, then you start to see, no, this really is real. Um so yeah, I, I feel like you can, that's how you grow in testimonies. You simply, you test it out. You test out the law of tithing. You test out the law of forgiveness and all these things. And then you see for yourself uh, that it's true and that you're on the right path. Yes, he says, prove me here with. Mm -hmm. um, one of my favorite scriptures is when Enos is praying for like hours on end, right? And the Lord goes to him and he's like, you're forgiven. And he goes, my guilt was swept away because I knew the Lord could not lie. So he just allowed the, uh, the, the guilt to leave him, you know, but for me, like, I know I've struggled with this in the past where I'm just like, are you sure you've forgiven me? Heavenly father. Like I just did so many things. This is terrible. And, and he's always like, do you believe me? And I'm like, I clearly don't believe you. So I'm going to work on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Kind of interesting because if it, it's like what you're talking about, it's almost like the opposite side of the spectrum. <clears throat> On the one side, you can be uncaring. You can be uh, stiff necked, hard hearted, past feeling on this side. Like you don't care what you're doing in the world and you're, you're ruining everybody's lives. But then you can also go to this other extreme where you don't want to hurt people. You're trying to do your best, but then you're like way too hard on yourself. It like goes the other way. So it's like you have to uh, be somewhere kind of like in the middle that, you know, um, not, not to either one of these extremes. Yeah. Like both of them are pride. I think it's easy to convince yourself that when you're like beating yourself up, it's like a humble thing, but it's just pride in the opposite direction. Cause you're not believing that you're forgiven, you know? Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, another thing I plan to do on my channel is, um, Okay, so like every help self help book I've ever read in my entire life, I've if it's a true principle and it's found on light, it's in the scriptures. 
Yeah. So I stopped reading self-help books. I don't do that anymore. I just go to the scriptures. And so it's sharing those principles. It's just, they use different language. Right. And so um, showing that like every answer to every question you could possibly have is in the scriptures. You just have to have eyes to see. Yeah. And you have to be willing. Like you have, I find it interesting that in the sacramental prayer, it says willing to take his name upon us. And I think that is a huge thing. If we can just be willing, willing to exercise faith, willing to see differences, we will see so many miracles in our life yeah. if we're just willing. Well, it, and that's the thing with um, reading the scriptures. You have to be willing to do that because it, it can be boring. A lot of people, they don't read the scriptures because it takes effort, you know, and so I think sometimes, and I'm not saying that you ever did this with like going to self-help books, but maybe some people out there, they want kind of like a quick answer or they want to know like the tricks to whatever the, the self-help book is about. Whereas it's in the scriptures, but you have to take the time to actually study the scriptures. And not everybody does that, you know, and there's a lot to read both in the scriptures as well as uh, the words of our modern day prophets and apostles. There's like so much to study, but you have to put in that work. And I'm afraid that there's some people out there that they they don't want to do that. They just want a quick fix. And that's not normally how life works. You have to put in effort and study and seek out uh, the answers that you to the questions that you have. I think also, if we were to be completely honest with ourselves, we're looking for a different savior than Jesus Christ. Yeah, We want Jesus Christ to like save us from all our problems, but he doesn't do that. Like that one quote, I don't remember who it's by, but it talks about the world will take the people out of the slums, but Jesus takes the slums out of the people and then they take themselves out of the slums. Mm -hmm. And I think that's exactly how Christ is. He He purifies us and sanctifies us, sanctifies us and then we create the life we want. And we make those choices of how to be like him because he knows how good it is for us to choose like that, to choose for ourselves instead of every problem being taken from us. So yeah. if we're to be completely honest, we want a different savior than Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that really sucks to see. It does. And yeah, like, like you said, uh, taking the slum out of you, that means doing uh, like the inner work to change yourself on the inside. Uh, so that you get external results. And, and I, I like this analogy. I've heard this before. It's like, if you want to learn to paint, like you see like a master painter and his painting, and then you try and recreate it. That's like a good exercise because then it helps you maybe learn techniques. But um, so it's like you do the commandments, you do go through the checklist and hopefully that's having the effect on you, like teaching you how to become that thing. But ultimately it's not just the checklist. It's hopefully as you do that, you start to like understand like, ah, this is what uh, the master is like this, you know, this is what Christ is like. So as I follow what he does, then I start to understand it for myself and become as he is and become one because we have the same uh, values. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. You know, in the in the book, love, the law of love with um, he was a 49er, Steve Young. Oh, he yeah. talks about that, how at very first our relationship with Jesus Christ is very transactional. And then we make the shift where we start doing it because we love the Lord. We start mm -hmm. developing a love for him. And so it's learning to do that. Like, am I motivated by transaction? Maybe you could definitely be motivated that way. But it's learning to change that motive to love. I do it because I love the Lord and I do it because I love myself and that's who I want to be. Yeah. And this is beside the point, but are you a 49ers fan? I do not care about football, to be honest. <laughs> well, that's good because they lost la this last Super Bowl to the Kansas City Chiefs. Okay, back on track. Thank you. <laughs> Um, okay, so then my next thing I want to talk about is every blessing is predicated upon law. And I really want to um, highlight that every blessing, not just some, not just maybe, oh, well, maybe the Lord will give it to me. No, every blessing is predicated upon law. And if you want a blessing, figure out the law so you can get that blessing, right? Mm -hmm. So, for example... Um, the laws of mind. This is one of my absolute favorites. Um, if you want to overcome depression, 
depression is just a untrained mind. So when you understand how the mind works and the laws around it, you can overcome anything. You can overcome your ADHD. You can overcome depression. You can overcome anxiety. But the truth is we don't want to do the work. We would rather be medicated because we're looking outside of ourselves, right? We want someone outside of us to fix it. But really the answer lies within. It is learning to train yourself. The Lord invites us in the scriptures and commands us to have a firm mind of all forms of godliness. So if we truly want a firm mind of all forms of godliness, then you need to understand how the laws work around it and to follow it. So like, for example, um, one of the laws, the very first law is thought comes before feeling. So there's clean thoughts and dirty thoughts. So if I'm thinking that I made a mistake and I want to fix it, but I am a child of God and I am not my mistake, that would be a clean thought. So then I'm motivated to change, right? I'm, I'm not going into shame. I'm not shaming myself. I'm just seeing as it is. Oh, I made a mistake and Heavenly Father, please help me do better. But a dirty thought, which is what Satan trains us to do and the world is I am bad because I made a mistake. I always make a mistake. I can never get this right. So we're thinking that. And then when you think it enough, you start to believe it. But the thing is, is when you think it, you feel it. And then when you're thinking it and you're feeling it, you start acting depressed, right? Like you start, um, you feel crappy. Let's just be honest. You feel really crappy. <laughs> Mm -hmm. When you're thinking those things and you're feeling those things. So when you can learn, this is why I love um, meditation because it teaches you to catch your thoughts. When you can become a really good observer of your thoughts and you can nip them in the bud really fast, you will be able to train your mind. So the Lord invites us to take every thought captive. And so he really means take every thought captive and, uh, and retrain your mind. So that's just an example. And then my next one I love is the law of um, choice and accountability. And so if well, you want to really quick, before we move on to that, <clears throat> I just wanted to point out, um, I think it's President Holland. He's talked a lot or at least relatively a lot about mental illness and depression and stuff like that. And I think it was him who talked about. There was somebody that was talking about the desolating scourge uh, in that's mentioned in the Doctrine and Covenants and how. Well, just how there would be scourges in the land uh, before the second coming and how mental illness is one of those things. And um, I do think that we need to we need to seek professional help. But also it's kind of hard because, you know, our, our science isn't perfect. And everything that you're saying, I think, is very true. Like the, the gospel very, very well could uh, fix a lot of things. I guess it depends on the person. But I think that by living the gospel... And being a disciple of Christ, it can probably really help uh, with all those things. Uh, I don't know if it's going to help with like psychosis or like schizophrenia, things like that that have to do with like chemical imbalance. And well, I don't know if it's chemical imbalance, but I know that there's like different causes behind psychosis. But um, I think that I, I I do. I think that living the commandments does have an effect on mental health and behavioral health. And as the world gets more and more wicked. I don't think I don't think that we can just write it off as well. They can't help it. It's, you know, mental illness. I do think that there's definitely things that we can do to mitigate that by living righteously. And and then there's kind of like a um a multiplier effect if like the world keeps getting more and more wicked and you start having more and more uh different issues, depression or the whole host of different disorders that are out there, then it can actually pass on to others because uh, then you put more stress out into the world that could cause more uh, anxiety, depression, and mental illness. So it's a tricky one, but there, I think there definitely is a lot that we can do simply by, by living the gospel. But I just wanted to say that. Yeah. Well, that's like a, that's a, another topic for another time. Cause it's, there's, it's so much, but um I lost my train of thought. Hold on. Um, I think it comes down to, do you believe that Christ can give you a new heart and a new mind? Do you believe yeah. that he is more powerful than what the doctors say? Or do you get, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Do you inhibit yourself or 
because of what the doctors say. Like, um, there's a, there's a scripture in Doctrine and Covenants. I just tried finding it, but it says that, um, those of you who are not appointed unto death, and if you have the faith to be healed, you will be healed. And so it is my personal belief that Christ can heal all of it. But the question is, do you want it? Like he can give us a new mind and a new heart. I don't think um, any of that stuff is an issue to him, but you have to be willing to first have faith in him that he can even do it and then be willing to follow the laws that govern that. So that's that's my little spiel about that. I can go on for days about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it is true. I think we need to be sensitive because it is it is hard and it can be scary to to start trying to see that within ourselves. And so if if getting help is the best way to do that, then please, by all means, do so. But yeah. also have faith that the Lord can help you. Yeah. And that he wants to help you. Yeah, and, and and in in his own time as well. <clears throat> yes. Okay. Okay. So then, um, one of my other favorite laws is the law of choice and accountability, and I also call it the law of happiness. And it's learning to take full responsibility of your life. So no longer being victim, no longer using that as a tool in your tool tool belt to get what you want. It is taking full responsibility over your life. So like how the scripture says, learning to be um, learning to act instead of being acted upon. That would mean you are choosing how you want to behave instead of being like, well, he makes me feel this way. He did this to me. Like, no, that's not how it works. Like people have a responsibility for how they choose to treat you, but you also have no control over that. You only have control how you think, how you feel, how you behave, what stories you tell yourself, what expectations you hold. And that is, it's learning to take full responsibility over all of that. And when you can learn to do that, you'll be happy because you live your life in surrender. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, okay, my kid chose to show up that way, but I don't have to let it affect me. Do I need to hold boundaries? Yes, I can learn. I can hold boundaries. But I don't have to let it affect my day. I don't have to let it um, ruin my life. Yeah. And so that is that's another one of my favorites. I love it so much. And it, the reason it's... people feel victim, sorry, hold on. The reason yeah. people feel victim is because they believe they don't have a choice. But there's always a choice. And sometimes the choice is just choosing to be happy or choosing um, to have faith. You know, that might be the choice but it is a choice. It's kind of a critical concept <clears throat> when it comes to repentance, because if that's how you're doing life, that you don't take accountability, uh, everything that goes wrong, it's not because of you, it's because of somebody else. But in reality, it was because of you. Then that's a problem when it comes to repentance, because part of the process of repentance is you, you first have to realize and you have to acknowledge that you did something wrong. So if you always try and cover it up and edit reality and put the blame onto somebody else when in, in, in reality it was you, then how are you going to repent? Like that's the second uh, principle of the gospel. First, it's faith and then repentance. And that's number two. If you're stuck at number two, don't worry about all these other things like that. That's like one of the most fundamental things that we have to understand and it's hard. It's hard to admit that you're wrong or that you could have done better in that situation. But it's critical. You have to be able to do that. Otherwise, you just keep racking up, you know, this bill of uh, committing sin and pretending like it's not there. Yeah. One thing, like in our home, when I started learning these principles, I was doing it. And one of the beautiful things is, is when you do it, it's like a domino effect. Everyone else in your life and around you starts to do it because they see that you're so willing to take responsibility that they're like, oh, it's safe for me to take responsibility too, because you're not going to go and attack them. You're going to mm -hmm. be like, thank you so much. Like, let's work together. You know, like I love apologizing to my kids and helping and letting them see, um, or yeah, letting them see, like, I made a mistake. Like, I was not okay with how I treated you. This is how I would do it differently. Would you please forgive me? Yeah. And then they do it with each other. And then I see them do it with other people. And it's like this beautiful domino effect in your life. It's is part it of what it means. Yeah. It's part of what it means to let your light shine. 
That's letting your light shine. You're yeah. getting into darkness. You're being a light. You're being an example. Yes, I love that. That is so true. And people see that. Like, they see that you're approachable and they love that. Like, it builds trust. Mm -hmm. Trust is so important. Yeah, agreed. All right, and then... <laughs> Um, and then the last thing I hope to do is help gather Israel. Of course, I've made some videos about, about that, about, um, proclaiming the church of Jesus Christ, of Latter-day Saints being the Lord's, um, true church here upon the earth. And those have been some fun videos. And so, um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Okay, perfect. Well, I think you're going to be doing great things. Um, so everybody make sure to subscribe to Courtney. Uh, again, the link is going to be in the description, in the description box below. And if you haven't subscribed to me, make sure to do that. Like this video. If you liked it, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also make sure to share it and we'll talk to you guys later.